So I'm bringing the uh, timing marks back into alignment again, which I hope you can see. You can see, you should be able to see the dot on the camshaft, and I'm just bringing that mark on the crankshaft into position which you should be able to see there so they're all lined up so now I can uh, commence putting the timing chain on right so new timing chain and uh, I'm going to feed it around the crankshaft sprocket bit by bit probably won't show all of this It would be easier if I took this bearing off, but I don't really want to do that because that would be pulling on the outside of the bearing. Uh, and I don't really want to be doing that if I, if I don't have to. So I'm just going to patiently feed the chain around the sprocket and get it to where I want it. Just gently feeding that around there with a patience. So I fed the chain round and uh, you can see that we've got one end here 
another end here and um, I now need to join the two together and this is this is a right fiddly fiddly job um, sometimes it goes easy sometimes it's uh, not so easy uh, make sure again that the uh, timing marks are properly aligned which they are and uh, uh, then you can uh, you've got to put the uh, the link in so first thing I'm going to do is uh, bung up this hole here again with a bit of rag uh, to stop anything dropping in the crankcase and uh, then what I'm going to do is um, join the two ends together first of all using a small cable tie and then that way I'm free to uh, fiddle around getting the um, getting the uh, spring link in. Right, so small cable tie. I'm going to put them in through the rollers. And this is the bit. Just put a, put a rag in the bottom there, stop it from. If it does drop down, it won't get it all shitty. Sorry if you can't see anything, it's a right old fiddle, you'll see the result anyway. Okay, so there's the cable tie on, and uh, pull the links nice and tight towards each other like that and then hopefully is the new spring link you've got to wiggle this in from behind obviously Again, much patience is required. Let's just see. 
thing about new timing chains is that they're pr a pretty tight um, they're pretty tight even um, when they've got them set up like this together so the spring link will go in okay so there we go Good luck. <laughs> this man, this is tight. What I'm doing here is um, pulling the two ends of the chain, imagine my fingers are the two ends of the chain, I'm staggering them a bit with a bit of leeway I've got with the cable tie so as I can get one bit of the spring link started first and then hope it goes into the, uh, into the other bit. top bit let's try that once more so yeah you can see the spring link has come through. The other thing I'm using on here is a pair of channel needle nose pliers. See how they, there's a channel in my needle nose pliers there, that helps. So I just push that back enough, hopefully, so it, doesn't, it did drop out, so I'll try again. This is where you've got to be careful that you don't have that hole uncovered because. Um, um, could easily drop down the hole into the crankcase there. So we'll push that out again.
using a screwdriver to assist me this time. Tucking the screwdriver behind the back of the uh, link just to apply some pressure to it. And there it is, it's in place. So it wasn't too bad. I hope that recorded, yes, it did. So there it is in place. Uh, of course, next you need. the um, plate and the spring link, the spring itself now that plate okay so I've cut the, um, the cable tie off and what I'm going to do now is just rotate the crankshaft two revolutions and that should bring the timing marks back into alignment again just to make sure everything is, is as it should so now that's about one revolution of the crankshaft and you can see that the the dot is just at the six o'clock there and the um, the timing mark on the crankshaft sprocket is at six o'clock as well So here comes the mark on the camshaft again. Can't see the crankshaft mark yet. Here it comes. And they are both in exactly the right position. Notice that the, oh, I didn't see that, let's take the camera off. So there we are, there's the um, the uh, camshaft mark and if I just turn the light a bit you should be able to see the crankshaft mark there as well so there you can see the two marks in alignment and uh, if you notice you can also see in the bottom right hand corner of the picture the camshaft woodruff key is also at six o'clock so that's all in in alignment as it should be right i've been the complete numpty I've forgotten to put the timing chain tensioner piston in and you can't get it in along with its spring you can't get it in with the timing chain on it's not the first time I've done this it's not the first time I've done the timing chain obviously but it's not the first time I've done this the last time I did a timing chain I think I did exactly the same thing and had to take the epoxy timing chain apart again um, but there you are, I put it down to it being a senior moment because um, I'm old um, and uh, well there we are uh, 
apart it all comes again I've put um I've put a um, uh, cable tie loosely on to hold the ends of the links so that the, the whole thing doesn't drop apart which will help me a little bit but I've got to take that spring link out again um, and uh, to give me enough free play to get the uh, the piston and the new spring in so there we are hopefully seeing my mistake you won't do the same or if you're experienced and just watching this for fun you can have a good laugh at my expense well you can have a good laugh at my expense anyway can't you I've also plugged up that hole again with a bit of paper, but you can probably see that. So, off with that. Off with that. I've realigned the timing marks before doing all this um, so that it should all go back together with the minimum amount of pain. So there we are, we've got enough room now to get the um, the uh, piston back in. There's the new spring. There's the new tensioner blade. There's the old tensioner blade. We'll move that out of the way. piston in
So there's the blade on. So we've got to uh, hold that back the same way as we did when we were taking it off. Um, so I'll just get a couple of um, uh, cable ties uh, and um, hold that in position. Then I'll put the chain back on. So um, I'll just put the new E clip on to stop the tensioner blade from slipping. It's in position. So there we are, there's the uh, timing chain tensioner in position and uh, locked back against its stop. Right, back to square one. Okay, so Let's um, pull that round on the sprocket, make sure the marks are still in alignment. Which they are. And we'll pull that timing chain together. So there we have the um, link in position on the top um, we'll get it in position on the bottom now there we go it's in there we go that wasn't painful was it? plate on so Just checking the alignment those timing marks again. Yep. And there's the uh, spring link back in position. I'll just cut that. The uh, 
removed. Pull that piece of paper out. Okay, so let's turn the sprocket again a couple of times, make sure it's all hunky dory. So there's the um, um, timing mark for the camshaft at six o'clock. So that means the crankshaft's gone through one revolution, and we, I can see the timing mark on the uh, crankshaft is back in position. Okay, so we'll turn that again. Perfectly aligned. Good. Okay. So the next thing to do is to put this guide on on this side. So if you remember there's a couple of spacers that go on first and then the guide goes on. There's one spacer that should go there and there's another spacer that should be on there for the bolt and uh, that goes into position like that. So I've got to slip the spacer down between um, this guide and the um, uh, front uh, main bearing mounting which this mounts to. So we'll do that. So there's the spacer, um, and that's going, you can't see this I'm afraid, but that's going in position between, as I say, between the, uh, the aluminium main bearing carrier and the guide. Oh, that's Without had a washer on the bolt. Put a washer on the bolt. And then uh, Washer on the stud, nut on, and that needs to be correctly adjusted. So remember, the timing chain tensioner has not been um, added yet. What I need to do is to adjust this side just by pushing it inwards
that needs to be adjusted I just press on it with um, with my uh, screwdriver and there should be no more than or no less than half a mil minimum of half a mil free play in the chain when that's a when that's fitted on uh, remember that the uh, automatic tensioner does tensioning anyway well that's how you set it up and then that can be nipped up in position I'll just add a little bit of lube to that to help its initial whilst it's initially just those first few seconds after start up. Tighten those up now. Make sure we've got, we've still got. About a mil of play on there. Um, that should be okay. Right, I've put um, a thin film of grease. on the gasket both sides put it in position don't forget there is also a gasket to go there and one to go there okay those are important they don't act as a seal for anything but they keep the spacing of the timing cover um, correct uh, in relation to the, dis the thickness of the gasket so um, this so the, the this gasket here and these two paper washers that i just pointed out here and on the other side um, are the same thickness and that helps keep the um, when you're tightening the cover up it doesn't distort i've got the cover warming up um, so that it will slip over the bearing easily uh, and I've also I've put a new seal in the cover, new oil seal in the cover. Uh, I've not really, um, well, I, don't, I didn't show that because I mean, if you don't know how to put oil seals in, then you, this is a bit possibly a bit um, much for you. Um, the, the oil seal just presses in. You just knock the old oil seal out and press the new oil seal in. You can press it with your thumbs. Uh, or if necessary just use a socket of the same diameter as the oil seal there's the there's the old oil seal I took out just put a socket on it and tap it till it's flush with the cover so that's that uh, 
Right, hopefully, let's see if this cover's warmed up. Yeah, the cover's nice and warm, so um, I'll go and retrieve that. Just, it only needs to be taken up to about 80 degrees or so, it doesn't need to be um, very hot, just so it slips over the, um, slips over this bearing easily. So there's the cover. All nice and clean, Give, gave that a good clean obviously. Well, so we'll just slip that into position now. He says. Getting all the screws in.
making sure that that little washer's in position. Okay, so all the screws are in position. I'll just um, put my grommets in place here and here. I've got the cables for the B terminal on the diode board. I've got two on the standard system, you only have one. You've got this cable here that's got to go on the back of the diode board, that's the blue one. You, we've got to have this um, this is my points cable um, but you'll have a um, if you if you as most of you will have a bean can um, hall effect trigger you'll also have a cable hanging down which mine's tucked up away in inside the starter housing but there's also the um, the cable that goes on the bean can this this is the other connection of it there's a that's an electronic ignition bean can that I've got on the bench so remember that it's got to connect up to its tight uh, it's it's a connector up inside here there's a multi-point connector in there okay so this um, this terminal here on the starter motor has got to be connected up uh, and that is the black cable it comes through the window at the front so it comes it's um this this cable here okay through that window at the top there and that's got to be plugged into the starter solenoid otherwise when you push the start button if that's not connected nothing will happen so uh, that's got to go on. You see, it's trying to do it holding the camera and plugging it in at the same time. That's in position. Uh, yeah, actually, that's a, a Nippon Denso starter motor, so your terminal position may be slightly different if you've got a Vallejo or a Bosch starter. Um, so, okay. So next I'm going to put the um, rectifier back on or diode board as some people like to call it. This again is a, um, a um, high output one, uh, Emerald Isle or Emerald Island um, one. Uh, but the connections are the same except for the fact that on this terminal there are two cables that go on that's part of, part of this system. Um, important thing to remember is that this terminal here, the D plus terminal, is connected up to the uh, the blue cable, and that needs to go on. That blue cable needs to go on before um, before you put the mounting on. I'll put it on the mounting.
careful not to uh, pinch up any wires. Cables need to go on. That one's a bit loose. I think I'll just pinch up the uh, spades on that. These are um, solid mounts on this um, high up alternator. Oh, right. And before we go any further, Okay, before I go any further, I better talk up the um, the fasteners for the um, timing chain cover. So the um, the bolts are um, ten newton meters on this, so. I'll do the bolts first. I'll start in the middle and um, just cross, cross tighten. A bit like doing a cylinder head. Just so it's done generally evenly, um, it's not as essential as it is on a cylinder head. I 
think that's all the, what I'll do now is I'll just go around them all in descending order so that's okay so they're all done and uh, now I've got to put the nuts on because they're in a recess what I'll do is I'll just uh, stick the washers to the nuts with a little bit of grease all right so makes it easier to um, attach so I glued the washer on with a bit of grease So two on the uh, left hand side of the bike and um, one on the right hand side. Those three need talking up. And the uh, nuts are seven millimeters. Okay, so now that's all talked up, I'm just going to tap on the cover to, um, to settle the bearing. And uh, now I'll carry on putting that, um, um, rectifier back on. So washer. Spinning the nut on using a socket. In uh, this particular case, I've got some earth wires. These earth wires for my high output alternator. And then I'll uh, 
I'll do the same on the other side. So I've tightened up the uh, nuts on the left hand side of the bike, just tightening up these ones now for the um, diode board. Okay, so that's the diode board back on. Uh, now I'm going to put the uh, rotor back on. So uh, before putting the rotor on, I'm going to put a little smear of grease on the uh, outside edge of the rotor here. Just put a little smear of grease on that outside edge there um, just so that uh, that lubricates the seal the new seal that's in there and then just push that into position uh, and uh, then we can screw that up So I put the rotor in, sorry you didn't see that because I had the camera at the wrong angle. Um, so the, the rotor's in uh, and the screw's in, I've just got to torque it up. And that's um, uh, 17 to 20, I think. Uh, sorry, um, 23 to 27 Newton meters. Done. And uh, then we can put the stator back on. Now, the thing about the stator is you've got to be careful with these uh, um, brushes, good time to inspect the brushes, they look okay to me uh, so just they've, those brushes have got to be carefully manipulated over the um, uh, slip rings of the rotor so we offer that up in roughly the right position and then um, just lift the brushes over Quite a simple procedure onto the slip rings, okay, and uh, then put the mounting screws on, of which there are three. Get all the threads started. Tighten those in evenly. Just keep going round the round the system until you start to feel it starts to feel tight. Nicely seated. So now there are no um, torque red settings for the stator so it's just a case of carefully looking up the bolts uh, and then reconnecting your cables so that's the Ignition system cable. If um, if you're not if if you're likely to forget the um, 
positions where these cables go on take a photograph on your phone or whatever uh, before you dismantle it Gonna jiggle this ignition wire through this loop. Stops it getting trapped in the case. There. So there's all my cables connected up. Um, for the alternator and for the rectifier just got to put the, um, the old bean can on now Got to align the dogs up for this. The dog is offset. Get it roughly right. Uh, now, this should go in and go all the way down to the mounting. Right, that, that's right. Oops. That's in position. If it's sticking proud, don't tighten the screws up. It must, the flanges where the screws go in must be flush with the case. If you tighten it up and it's not properly located, you will break the flange. Put the um, the flange holes uh, roughly in the middle of the slots. Let me just show you that. So you can see there the uh, thread holes are roughly in the middle of the slots. Okay, and then you will need to reset the timing, obviously. But that should be okay to get it start started. I'm not going to tighten those up because I will need to um, adjust the ignition timing. I've just got to reattach the um, points cable. Which is just one spade terminal for me. Most of you will have um, um, electronic ignition. So you have to reconnect the plug okay well we're done we are done all we've got to do now is put the gas tank on start her up
and do the ignition timer. Of course, before I do that, I'll need to put the starter motor back on, so I'll do that. Uh, and then we'll come back to the ignition timer. Okay, so I'll run three degrees of advance. Which you may or may not be able to see there. So I've set my gun at three degrees so we're just showing the top dead centre mark is in line with the notch in the side of the engine 